Hey, look who's hey, here. Rick. Hey, Jim. You got any guitars for sale? Yeah, we got a few. This stuff, I guess, I've been doing about the last 20 years using the reclaimed New York City wood. What does it say there? 184 Bowery, 1865, yeah. white yeah. pine. I call it the bones of old New York. Hear it? Feels <laughs> comfortable. He's a good splinter guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guitar, Rick. It's got great vibe. <laughs> I'll take one. All right. <laughs> you know, I don't know anybody like you. You don't have a cell phone. You don't have the internet at your house. You need to move into the 21st century already. Why? I always really wanted to find somebody that I could pass this on to, because it is sort of a lost art. What do you think about this? I think it looks good. There's a part of music that everybody knows, which is what winds up on the record. Yeah. You know? But then there's the invisible part of music that people don't know. And it's like everything from the people who built this guitar and all other guitars mm -hmm. to the people who create the spaces where people can hang out. It's about having a community. That's the way I feel. Yeah. I'm going to charge a lot more for this guitar now. <laughs> <laughs> this one just went up in price, man. <laughs> it's got Bill Verzell in there. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Curzon Live, Curzon Living Room ongoing season of live Q&A events on Curzon Home Cinema. My name is Zoe Howe and I'm a rock and roll biographer. Um, I've written books about people like Wilco Johnson and Stevie Nicks and uh, Jesus and Mary Chain and Slits and all sorts of people like that. Uh, but tonight I'm here because I'm um, hosting a very special uh, panel event about the beautiful film Carmine Street Guitars with director Ron Mann, Rick Kelly and Cindy Hule of Carmine Street Guitar Shop and Lenny Kay, guitarist in the Patti Smith group and uh, also the producer of the wow. seminal Nugget <laughs> compilation of Psychedelia. Yeah. If wow. you're watching us live, we're <laughs> taking your questions via comments on YouTube. <laughs> Twitter and Facebook and our Twitter handle is Curzon at Curzon Cinemas sorry and please use the hashtag Curzon Living Room and we'll read out as many as we can. So now the housekeeping is out of the way and I'd just like to welcome all our lovely guests. Hello everybody Hi. around the world and everybody watching at home. Um, I hope you've all watched the film it's a beautiful thing um, and I just want to start off uh, with with Ron, uh, director Ron sure. Mann and just to say congratulations it's such a beautifully made film. It's it's like a meditation in a way, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, we were talking about this earlier, how I thought that when I started off making movies that it was more about propaganda and, it, and it's an agitprop and films being used as a tool. And um, as a documentarian, um, you know, that's, I want to turn people on to, you know, um, what I'm interested in, but now I'm starting to think of what, because Rick said something in a, uh, a presentation of the movie at the premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival, where he said that um, watching this film lowers your blood pressure. And I'm now thinking of movies as healing um, physiologically. And I'm not a neurologist, but I just think that that's what, when you, especially during COVID, that it really is a kind of uh, I don't know, people have this kind of, um, I've been getting feedback about how the film has kind of so, sort of calm, is calming. Absolutely, that definitely came across. And I, I think especially for lots of reasons, but especially now the idea of even going into a shop is sort of seems quite remote to Nostalgia. a lot of us. <laughs> yeah, right, so it, right, it's, a, it's, right. a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you. Yeah. I mean, um, Rick, uh, what, what were your thoughts um, on the idea of a film being made on a, a, around a kind of week in the life of your shop? 
Uh, I just, this, you know, immediate, my immediate reaction was, why the hell would anybody want to see a movie about me? <laughs> but, uh, it was really a lot more than that. Obviously. It's it kind of like oh, taking a walk back in time. That's what it's like coming to this old shop. Uh, this is, we're in a 1927 building and uh, I try to keep it as old school as possible. Uh, there's no cash registers, money out of the pocket, you know, things like that. And, uh, we're pretty low key. I just have to say, like, I, I thought it was very that nobody had made anything about Rick before. So when I heard that, it didn't surprise me at all. I was pretty excited. <laughs> it's fantastic. I mean, I, I, I gather, I saw in the credits that Jim Jarmusch is uh, credited as, as an instigator for the project. Tell me a bit more about how it all began. Yeah. Uh, well, Jim has been coming into the shop for, for years um, and considered <laughs> Carmine Street Guitars as a, a post office. I mean, he would leave messages for, um, you know, musicians and they would, you know, a week later and they would pick it up. And then, um, and um, I, uh, I'm friends with Jim and we were at a, a music festival in Tennessee called Big Ears. And um, um, there were many players with Kelly guitars and I, you know, asked naively um, about, uh, who's Rick Kelly. And, um, you know, um, soon enough, we were in the Carter Logan, the executive producer, um, who produces Jim's films, uh, introduced me to Rick. And um, that's how the film started. I mean, I love the fact that, uh, I mean, just quick, sort of going back to Rick, but the, the, the fact that yourself and Cindy are sort of quietly uh, crafting guitars out of, as you put it, the bones of old New York. We tell us a bit more about that and the, the wood, because that's a really important part of this story, isn't it? It's, it's the journey from tree to, to guitar. Yeah. Yeah, this wood is, uh, we, we have wood here that came from old growth timbers, and we have like the largest depository of old growth timber in the world, right here in New York City buildings. It was wow. back in the uh, 1700s, the city was being created from mostly uh, white pine forests that kind of covered this whole area all the way up to the Adirondacks. It really wasn't the deciduous hardwood forests that there are now. Back then it was mostly uh, you know, conifers and they pretty much have built every building. Uh, it's you know the bones of the building. It's where I got the term the bones of old New York. Okay. Every one of these old 1800s, 1700s building is, is framed out in the same wood. I but love it's that. Extremely it's extremely resonant. It's extremely yeah, the wood is really, uh, because The wood has been indoors for 200 years, so it's extremely seasoned. Resonant. And it's very resonant, so it makes a beautiful instrument, and it's really fun to work with. Mm. And, you know, I always feel like the wood has a story to tell. You know, it's seen everything from even back to almost George Washington's days, you know, oh. when they were trees growing still, and then they became a building and now they're a guitar and it's just a, a nice transformation in the life of a tree. It, it, and it's a, it's a hell of a, a, a kind of a unique selling point in a way because the, it's, it's so special to, to imagine sort of having a guitar that has this story and this history uh, that's, um, you know, this plank of wood could never have imagined that it would now be kind of living this whole new life. And uh, I mean, Lenny, just to bring Lenny Kay into the into the conversation, um, you, you touch on this in the film and you say that, you know, you really feel like Kelly guitars make you feel like you're playing New York. Um, I mean, what what is your favorite Kelly guitar on your collection? And do you know where the wood's from? I know Here it is. <laughs> It's from 184 Bowery, <laughs> on the Bowery, and it's so nice to hear it. <laughs> there it is, 184 Bowery, a ceiling. Yeah, uh, there for like uh, well, it's getting nice uh, for uh, 60 years or 70 years, probably more when it was actually a tree. And, you know, the wood swelled and the wood compressed in the winter and you know it's just a great piece of wood and I asked Rick to uh, make it not finish it off even though I see Cindy's beautiful you know designs and I think well maybe I could get a little bit on here or something or maybe I could actually have a, have a real pick guard instead of getting splinters when I play it but uh, I just love this guitar. it's uh oops I really do know how to play guitar <laughs> Oh yeah, 
baby. But I love this guitar. It's very handy. And uh, thank you, Rick. Thank you, Cindy, for uh, for uh, giving me this this uh, skeletal piece of New York. It's fabulous. It's I mean, I just love the the stories behind all these kind of pieces of wood, and, the, and that Rick's got these sort of stacked kind of planks that just have the kind of pencil marks on the end with you know what comes from where and the year it's it's completely fascinating and uh, uh, just to uh, bring Cindy into this a little bit more I, I I like that your presence kind of bridges these two worlds you've got this very old old school way of doing things and the digital age and you're kind of you know bringing things into the into the digital age as you know in a kind of really nice balanced way and of course you're posting on Instagram you've got the hashtag guitar porn and I mean the whole shop is guitar porn let's face it but I mean it, it's a joy to see you both kind of at work in this really beautiful symbiotic way but what was it that first made you say to yourself I want to do this I want to work with Rick and I want to craft guitars I mean, it was really like, I grew up with guitars. My dad played for 40 years and I had been following Rick throughout high school on forums like Gear Page and, you know, all, all the guitar forums. They would post about Rick and uh, I was curious about it. And when I had the chance, I basically asked him for an apprenticeship and he took me on. Um, and it's, I've been here ever since, and but I, I never expected anything like what's even going on like right now like we're renovating the shop and it's just like such a major difference from when I started here I think we've both grown a lot together um in in building the shop up and doing things like that um I wasn't even on social media I actually got off of it when I started here um but I felt like people needed to see Rick's stuff and that actually is what put me back on Instagram originally. So I started the Carmine Tree Guitars Instagram. And once my brand was built up enough, we were both kind of like, okay, you got to get back on it. And I was like, fine. <laughs> like, all right. So I, I, but I've been doing it steady, obviously. And I think it's really helpful. And, and I think it's, it's really important, especially right now in, in these weird times, um, you know, we've, we're doing a lot more online stuff even than like even like beyond the Instagram and stuff at this point mm. but um it's yeah it's been really cool though yeah but that's that's kind of the basic gist of you know how it how it kind of happened and of course yeah. you have an art school training as well which feeds into the designs that you, you 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 do on the guitars and all the rest of it so you're kind of you're coming at it from lots of different angles aren't you yeah, yeah, that's interesting also because I've always really, like, I grew up with art, like, my, my father, I said, like, he played for 40 years and was an amazing guitar player, but also his brother was an amazing painter, so I grew up looking at his paintings all the time, and so that part of art and music has always been on, like, my father's side for the most part, and, and um, I, I, I just was always, like, very hands-on DIY with clothes with music with with art with whatever and when I when I was in high school I started studying an art students league with a guy named Michael Grimaldi throughout the summers and then outside of it I started studying full-time um and then from there like when I started here um Rick really pushed me to do a lot of the custom work and stuff and I didn't think anybody would want it um I thought they were going to want basic blackguard blondes and bursts and things like that and I was going you know nobody's going to want this and but he he believed in my work and that helped a lot um in terms of all of it the pyrography the staining the experimenting with feathers and leather and whatever else it's it's been a huge thing and um it it just kind of started from there and, and I've had orders ever since yeah I'm not surprised. I, I want one and I don't even play the guitar. <laughs> they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, I, I've got... <laughs> <Only three chords. laughs> um, Ron, I, I just want, I have to mention Rick's mother. What a star in a sort of, a, she's a really? quiet presence in the film, but she's very much a presence in the film and 93 years old in the film. Obviously that was a couple of years ago, but um, you know, we see her crunching the numbers and we see her doing a bit of dusting and 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 just doing lots of things but she did was she not keen to talk to the cameras or did you want to interview her or was that not on the table 
Um, but she was, she's definitely a character in the, and then she's, uh, she is Carmen Street Guitar. She's like the mother of Car Carmen Street Guitars. Um, I mean, Rick could speak to, uh, like, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and she's there uh, only, is it three days? At Rick, is she three days or is she uh, two days there? Four five. It's about four or five. Yeah. Four, five four or five. Yeah. Okay. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> she was, I mean, she was just fantastic. I mean, uh, we, the, we did film a lot with, with Dorothy. Um, um, and, uh, you know, she's just a, she's a real, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's wonderful because it's three generations that you're, mm. she, she's tuning into jazz. That's the, the one, I don't know if anyone picked up on that, but like in the front where she works, she's got her radio. Is this right, Rick? Right. She's got her radio and she's listening to, yeah. the, like, uh, yeah. uh, Dorsey and uh, Glenn Miller. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know, she's fantastic. And, and if you get her, she's super sharp. I mean, she's like really amazing. And uh, yeah, and, uh, and she knows, she knows, doesn't she know how to use the internet more than Rick does? <laughs> Am I right about that? Yeah, this is my yeah, record. Yeah, almost. Like, she's the one yeah. that is in front of the computer. <laughs> <laughs> sharp as a tack now she she just oh, yes there's this sort of quiet she's presence but very very much a memorable uh, person in the film um a, a, a question excitingly has just been fed through to me from a member of the audience jen from peckham has a question for the whole panel uh, but try not to answer in unison because that could be very confusing uh, the question is Eleanor Friedberger says the first song she learned to play was Sweet Jane, which is very cool. But the first song I learned to play was Mull of Kintyre by Wings, which is not very cool at all. Can I ask <laughs> the panel what the first song they learned to play on the guitar was? So let's go. Uh, well, let's can start I, with Lenny. Let's start. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> go for it. Oh, who, who's going where? Who's got Cindy? Did you want to? Lenny. Yes. Lenny. I thought Lenny was starting. Lenny's well, starting. Okay, I'm starting. <laughs> Lenny should start. Actually, it's it very. A, it's, I'll it's, tell you why. <laughs> it's very uh, coincidental because the first song I learned on the guitar I bought at a small village shop on uh, McDougal Street called Izzy Young's Folk Center and uh, Folk Folklore Center. And I bought a book, uh, a sing out book, and I learned how to play uh, Gotta Travel On out of it. I, it took me about uh, four minutes to learn each chord, you know, and I made sure to keep my tongue sticking out the side of my mouth the way you do it. <laughs> Bound right around and stay around this old town too long, summer's on yet. And then, of course, five minutes to get the next chord. Winter's <laughs> coming on. I'm getting around and sitting around. This old town too long. And I feel like I gotta travel along. So there's a nice. <laughs> but thank you. Maybe I should do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a really nice connection from the the uh, two block walk from McDougal Street at the Folklore Center and going over to Rick's and getting this guitar. Two blocks and uh, you know fifty five years, not too bad. And I still remember the song. It's fantastic. Amazing. Thank you, Lenny. My pleasure. Cindy. Yeah, amazing. Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little excited about this because we were just on uh, Instagram Live with Magnus Walker and he had asked me what my first song was that I played and I couldn't remember it. And I had my mother like call me afterwards and she was like, it was Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my father played <laughs> Just the hesitation. <laughs> like, how could you not remember that? My dad was like really into Southern rock. And um, I thought it was like the Ramones, like rock and roll high school or something. Because there's this weird, like, sort of, like, sort of a uh, version of like, okay, like I'm going, I'm sort of like growing up with Southern rock and oldies, but then I was getting into punk rock at like the age of 10. So 
I was trying to figure out like what was the actual first song that I played, but according to her, it was Sweet Home Alabama. So typical, but like it is what it is. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. It's quite complex right? though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I yeah, I had fun, like, but yeah. Yeah, I I mean, I grew up, I mean, he he played like so many cool things and so watching him for so many years, I think it was really, I was really interested in like the soloing and all that to, from the get-go. Mm. Um, so I wanted to pick up on all of the like extra notes and everything yeah, like, to, from absolutely. the start. So that was cool, yeah. yeah. That's great, that's great. <laughs> Rick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, goodbye pork pie hat. Really? <laughs> Rick, Whoa. that is amazing. Yeah. Have you heard the Ross on oh, Rolling yeah, Curve? That's fantastic. Yeah. Really? Okay, so yeah. I have to say I this. I you were going to know that. Oh my God. So one of my <laughs> favorite tunes. That's a favorite song in between there, by the way. One of my favorite tunes is Rasan Rolling oh Curve doing Goodbye Pork Pie Hat with lyrics, which Pork is about Pork. Lester Young. Yeah. And it's so beautiful. Yes. It's, I, I have to say it's one of my, besides Naked If I Want To by Moby Grape, it's right up there. <laughs> I was going to say, like, thank you, you guys are like, I can't even. Yeah, that's one of the best. I can't versions. even. Yeah. Oh my God. yeah, anyway, um, I mean, uh, I can answer this very quickly. So, uh, go ahead. Um, so, yeah. my, my the, um, I learned Louie Louie, which is the most oh. recorded song in history. Um, and Dave Marshall oh wrote a God. book about it. Um, I was going to make a movie about Louie Louie called Dangerous, Dangerous at Any Speed because the FBI um, said that um, it, it, it had secret messages <laughs> in it and should be banned. Yeah. So oh. that, that was, cool. yeah, that and yeah, that was my first song. Does anyone actually know the lyrics to Louie Louie? Is anyone because they're just so with the Kingsman yeah. version, it's like, what are they saying? I, I kind of yeah. like that, yeah, yeah. Like, they <laughs> shouted it, um, yeah, right, right, right. There was... You make up your own words, there you go. Rick makes so, his own words up to every song, though. <laughs> it's actually by Richard Berry, that's the uh, that's the uh, origin of that song. It's uh. It's a classic. Yeah. It's an yeah. absolute classic. Yeah. I've just been, oh, there, another, another question has arrived from uh, <laughs> Simone from London this time. Cindy, she says, I love the Travelling Wilburys and I love the Travelling Wilburys guitar you created. What is the next group you're immortalizing on a guitar? Oh, God. Well, the guitar, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a bunch that I'm working on right now. Um, the Wilburys was a was actually a custom order that this guy this guy got that he gets a bunch of the band guitars so i've done cream i've done the yardbirds i've done zeppelin i've done the stoned i've done like all of these people and that, and then I, like i'm working on like a guitar slinger guitar with rick where he's carving them it's got yeah, like two guns on it um i mean in terms of orders i think the next the next actual group order that i have is the new york dolls which is awesome oh wow, oh, wow. Um, all right this fantastic is, like the one that i'm working with right now yeah. And this is, I got like two guns on it. And it's like a wow. theme. And then it's like all the guitar slingers on it. And then like, there'll be some on the back wow. too. I don't know if you can see some of the pencil marking, but. Yes. Yes. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. What can, what can we read all these guys? This guitar uh, really Andrew, does kill Andrew, fascism. Andrew. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. Uh, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, uh, Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck. Uh, Steve Ray Vaughan. <laughs> Lenny, uh, Lenny, Lenny, Lenny Kay. Kay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, you got the Jimmy, best Jimmy on here, Lenny. And uh, Rory Gallagher. Rory Gallagher. Oh, yeah. oh, oh love, love for Rory. Rory. Rory, Rory, the best. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Like all kinds of on this one. That's that's um, Rick's favorite. That's beautiful. Rory. And then I inlaid like beautiful. leather on it and stuff for him too, which is cool. But um. Yeah, the New York Dolls is the next order, I think, that I have with an actual band on it. It's going to be a New York Dolls theme one. That's a great one. Wow, that's uh, it's exciting that's times. Cool. Yeah, I was, I was excited that they ordered that. Huh? I just, I've just received a message that I have five minutes and I've got a couple more questions that I would like to ask and I'm sure that there may be some more Ooh. coming from the audience as well. Uh, sure. But um, there's a, there's a, going back to the film, um, there's this, 
lovely moment in the movie where uh, Rick is talking about guitar loyalty or guitar monogamy and how when you sort of find the right one, it sort of becomes part of the person. Um, Lenny, I was going to ask you, actually, is, is there something about guitar specifically that kind of people get really attached to almost like a romance? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> I do believe I am a poly uh, amorphous uh, human being. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I, I do tend to have a relationship with a guitar. Uh, I believe that each of them has a certain voice that they like to speak uh, through. I mostly play Stratocasters. Uh, Rick made me a Telecaster, which uh, I'm just so happy with and has a totally different personality. But, um, you know, I think of, of guitars as like, you, you need a well-balanced meal. You know, there's sometimes you need, uh, you know, your, your uh, meat and potatoes. That's your Les Paul type. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for me, a Stratocaster is like uh, hmm, a good uh, a good cutty, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I really I, I I held on to my guitars for a long time. I really uh, understand them. They bring out different things within me. I've been playing uh, your uh, Kelly Caster has really become my couch guitar at home. I don't know why, it just feels great. It really looks good on my couch because when you go past <laughs> and you, you, you wanna pick it up and give it a few strums. So it's really, uh, you know, kind of made a, <clears throat> made a nice place in my particular uh, harem, one might say. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, yeah. perfect. And, uh, Ron, I, I just wanted to return to something just to kind of in a circular way, just kind of, um, you know, come back to something you said at the beginning with regard to the sort of um, the response that the film has had, this kind of comfort that it's bringing people and the kind of healing uh, aspect to it. And, and it made me think about that, too. I mean, I, I, there's, a, there's something especially poignant now in these strange times that, you know, we're, we're always calling them that that's what it is, you know, uh, it, the idea of things that stay the same and they're always there for us are uh, all the more kind of potent now I think and that's that's really a feeling that comes over uh with the film I think but there's this there is, there are glimmers of a changing world and I think you kind mm -hmm. of you, you treat these moments with a great lightness of touch but um there is this kind of moment of slight dread where you know the realtor hoves into view and mm -hmm. uh he's sort of practically sizing up the place and you think oh my god I mean we're left with a sense that everything is going to be okay but you know we're a couple of years on now from the the, the release of the film can, can you assure us people that everything's going to be okay and that Carmine Street Guitars shall live on long into the future? Well um, at the New York Film Festival um, the uh, Rick's uh, uh, lands uh, lady had uh, seen the film and she rushed up to Rick right after and said you're not going anywhere and so, Fantastic. and Rick, and, and it's through, Rick can um, pick up on this. Lucy said, um, Rick, uh, she <laughs> said that it's not just, it, it's, it's going to be written in um, her will. Is that, is that right? No, I don't know. Lily. Oh, Lily. <laughs> oh. Lily, Lily. We're closer with her than ever right now, though. Yeah. Even like, like she's in here every day. They're like, we're renovating and doing all kinds of things, and she's just, she's, she's the best, amazing. Best landlady you could have. Like right. her and her daughter yeah. are Rosie are both just incredible, and they've, they're, we've talked to them for an hour or two every right. day at this point. It's yeah, they're, they're just awesome. Yeah. Zoe, there is a dread um, and, a, you know, or a threat, and that is, the you know, real estate is so high. Rick and Cindy and Carmine Street Guitars are an anomaly. Mm. I mean, Lenny has been in this neighborhood forever. I, Greenwich Village to me is a very special place, but with Greenwich Village and San Francisco and London and Toronto, they're very universal in that we are under siege. Uh, mm. the, the, the developers are... Uh, uh, you know, real estate has become almost impossible. And part of what's great about Carmine Street Guitars is sort of capturing, you know, life before before anything happened, you know, because we're, um, as, as things change, um, it's sort of what we're, we're, we potentially could miss. Um, so that's the, the unfortunate, you know, 
it doesn't stop. But the good news, um, <laughs> not to leave anyone on a, a, um, on a negative uh, uh, note, but um, 40, I've, I've read the statistics that so many people are moving out of New York now into um, upstate New York that, that real estate will suddenly become available. And so I was just saying maybe that to the him rents earlier. come down <laughs> and then hopefully that will be the, the bright turn. Mm. Um, that yeah. That's interesting. Although it could That's be like in the 70s but <laughs> for a little bit. But <laughs> <laughs> the wheel is always turning. Uh, I've got one more question from uh, an audience member. This is via Twitter. This is Marlon Hoffman. Hello, Marlon. And Marlon has a question for Rick and uh, Cindy saying, what do you think I should get for my third Kelly Hule guitar? I don't know, but I'll tell you what we're working on right now for him. It's this. Yes, he's, I don't know. If, white, uh, his name is Whitehawk. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Woo! We're making. And I burnt all kinds of stuff on it, but uh, well, well, burnt Ooh. stuff, burnt <laughs> feathers and things. But that's very the white nice. Hawk. Yeah, the white Hawk. Yeah. That's yeah, gonna be cool. Oh man, the third. Carrie, we have to think about this now. Yeah. That's a great, that's a really great question. It's up to Marlon. Actually. We'll make him anything yeah. he wants. That's How about that, about Marlon? Guitars. We, we, once we get to know people, or, or if we don't, we get to know them and we really want to sort of incorporate what they are and who they are and what they love into the guitar. And it does make it one of a kind. And it's mm. something that no, literally nobody else in the world will have. So. That's awesome. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful way to wrap things up. And I just want to say thank you to all of the wonderful panel, Ron Mann, Rick Kelly, Cindy Hule, and Len Lenny Kay. Thank you so much. And, uh, thank, and thank you, you to, to Modern Films for making tonight's event possible. Um, it's just been lots of fun. And thank you to everybody who has tuned in and watched. Remember, you can, you can watch again as well, but everyone who's tuned in live, thank you for being with us. Uh, and Carmine. thank you, Zoe. Oh. <laughs> Zoe, 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 Zoe. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. What a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Carmine Street Guitars is available now to stream on Curzon Home Cinema. And if you enjoyed the film and this event, please tell your friends all about it. Um, upcoming events in Curzon Living Room include this coming Monday, 13th of July, director Franco Lolli and Carolina Sanin will be talking about their new film, Litigante. I uh, hope you like my, my accent there. I've been practicing that. Uh, next Thursday, the 16th of July, the legendary Werner Herzog will be in conversation with broadcaster Francine Stock about his new drama, Family Romance LLC. So don't miss that. And uh, remember, you can follow Curzon Cinemas on Twitter and Facebook for all the latest updates. Uh, and I've been your host tonight, Zoe Howe. It's been lovely to have your company. Uh, thank you, Curzon, for having me. And uh, thank you and good night. <laughs>